Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. Welcome to lecture number eight. In one of the previous lectures, we saw how the British established themselves in Bengal through the two battles of Plassey and Bexar. In this lecture, we are going to see how the British established their supreme authority in Mysore. Through the study of Anglo Mysore Wars. There were four Anglo Mysore Wars in which the British finally emerged victorious. Now we are going to see how the British was able to defeat the Mysorean rulers and establish their authority in Mysore, starting with the early days of Mysore. From the 17th century onwards, Mysore was ruling by a Hindu Odayar family. It was during the period of the Chikka Krishna Raja Odayar. The two brothers named Nanjaraj, he was the minister in charge of revenue, and another Devaraj. He was the commander in chief of the Mysore forces. They reduced the Mysore ruler to the status of a puppet and assumed the original authority. They became the de facto ruler. Krishna Raj became a de jure ruler. While during this time, quadrangular conflicts was going on in South India between Marathas, Nizam of Hyderabad, English and the French. In this previous lecture entitled Carnatic Wars, we went through the three wars engaged between the French and the English in South India. And this quadrangular struggle among the country powers and between the Europeans, especially between the French and the English, brought Mysore into dangerous politics. The Marathas of Western India, who had been emerging as one of the most powerful states from 1713 onwards under the rule of the Peshwas, it continued to engage in war with Mysore in 1753, 1754. 1757 and again in 1759. The Marathas were able to defeat Mysore in all these four wars. In between these Marathas expeditions, Nisam of Hyderabad also attacked Mysore in 1755. All these invaders took away the financial resources of Mysore. Because of the taking away of these financial resources, Mysore was left into financially bankrupt. 
Mysore was made a fertile political ground for the military exploits of the neighboring powerful states. What about the responses of these two de facto mini states, Devaraj and Nanjaraj, whether they were able to repulse the attacks made by the Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad? The answer was exactly no. Both these mini states were incapable. It provided an opportunity to Hyder Ali to rise to the occasion. He was born in Hyder Ali was born in 1721 in a very poor family. He started his career as a horseman in Mysore army. During the period of Nanjaraj and Devaraj, these de facto rulers were incapable to repulse the attacks made by Nizam of Hyderabad and Marathas. In this backdrop, Hyder Ali became the de facto ruler of Mysore in 1761. He assumed the supreme leadership of Mysore in 1761. Hyder Ali prepared to meet the challenges posed by these neighboring Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas. The first thing was to develop a powerful and disciplined army. He was well aware that a powerful cavalry was required to meet the Marathas in the battlefield. Likewise, an artillery wing to counter the French trained Nizami armies. As you recall that from the Second Carnatic War, the soldier come diplomat Bussi had been occupying Hyderabad and he played a vital role in providing training to Nizam's army. He was also aware of the importance of Western arms in these struggles. Even with the great valor and fighting capacity, the Indian soldiers would require modern weaponry. Otherwise, they would not be in a position to fight against the European forces with modern weaponry. In order to meet these demands, Hyder Ali set up an arsenal at Dindikel. Artillery was set up at Dindikel and he also adopted western methods of training of army. A well disciplined, well recruited and well trained army began to be maintained by Hyder Ali to fight against the Marathas, Nizam of Hyderabad as well as later against the British. Once he made his army strong, during the period between 1761 and 1763, he was able to capture Khoskot, Dothbelar, Velapur, Serra and Bedinur. These places were attacked and subjugated by Hyder Ali with his newly equipped army. He also subjugated the poly guards. They were the nearest analogy of the Semintars of North India. They were the owners of the large estates in South India. Hyder Ali was able to subjugate these autonomous chiefs, popularly known as polygods in South India. You recall that the third battle of Panipat, in this third battle of Panipat, Marathas were defeated 
by the forces of Ahmad Shah Abdali. Immediately after the Battle of Panipat of 1761, they recovered the Marathas recovered from this debacle and again they began to attack Mysore territory. The Marathas defeated Hyder Ali in 1764, 1766 and 1771. Even though Hyder Ali had developed a well-equipped army trained on western model, he could not withstand against the forces led by the Marathas. He was defeated in 1764, 1766 and 1771. Following which the Marathas forced Hyder Ali to surrender important territories to the Marathas. But after the death of powerful Peshwa, Madhava Rao, who he became the Peshwa of the Marathas, after the Panipat debacle of 1761 and he played a vital role in recovering the lost prestige and the power of the Marathas after the Panipat, third battle of Panipat. But this powerful Peshwa Madhav Rao passed away in 1772. It provided some relief to Hyder Ali. On the death of Madhava Rao, he attacked Marathas. They were defeated and Hyder Ali was able to recover his lost territories from the Marathas. In addition to this, the recovery of his lost territories, Hyder Ali was also able to acquire Bellari, Kadapa, Guti, Kurunul and the territories in the Krishna Tungabhadra Dov. These places were acquired by Hyder Ali after defeating the Marathas. Now we are going to see the first Anglo Mysore war. Why did the British attack Mysore? Let us have a look the reasons behind the attack of the British in Mysore. The Mysore rulers had control over the rich trade of the Malabar coast. Malabar coast was known for trade in spices especially in pepper and cardamom. The growing Mysore power under the leadership of Hyder Ali was seen as a threat to the British commercial interest in Malabar. It was one of the reasons why the British turned their attention towards Mysore. Mysore, since it was very close to Madras, which was the British stronghold in South India. The growing political power of Hyder Ali was also considered as a threat by the English to their stronghold in Madras. Moreover, the modernization of the army by Hyder Ali was also found a threat by the British. In addition to that, there were certain other developments which made the British attack on Mysore. One, the French alliance with the Mysore rulers. Mysore, ruler Hyder Ali, always tried to modernize his army with the support of the 
French. He got western arms and ammunition from French. So the alliance between the French and Hyder Ali was considered as a threat by the British. In addition to that, it was during this time Europe was going through Napoleonic wars. So, the home authorities in Britain saw the financial resources from India in order to meet the military operations against Napoleon. So, it wanted to have continuous flow of money from India. So, direct political intervention in Mysore was necessary for the protection of the commercial interest of the British. These were the actual reasons behind the British intervention in Mysore. But what did the British say about their intervention in Mysore? Their argument was that Hyder Ali treacherously got power from Hindu Vodayar house. The British mission was to restore the rightful authority, the power of Mysore. The British argued that it was with this good intention the British decided to intervene in Mysore for restoring the Mysore power to the Hindu Vodayar family. The actual reason was poorly commercial. Coincided with the rise of Hyder Ali, with the modernization of his army, created fear among the neighboring Indian powers, the Marathas in Western India, Nizam of Hyderabad, and the Nabab of Karnatik. They were also feared the rise of Hyder Ali with the modernization of his army into new heights. Following which the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas entered into a treaty with the British. After which the Marathas attacked Hyder Ali in 1766. However, even though Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad entered into alliance with the British, Hyder Ali pursued Nizam of Hyderabad and Marathas and he brought these two powers to his side. After bringing the Marathas, and the Nizam of Hyderabad took his side, Hyder Ali attacked the British and he was able to reach the gates of Madras. The panic strike on Madras government immediately entered into a treaty with the British. The Treaty of Madras on 4 April 1769. Under the terms of this treaty, the first Carnatic War came to an end. The first Carnatic War, which started in 1767, which came to an end by the Treaty of Madras signed between English and Mysore ruler Hyder Ali. Under this treaty, it was decided to maintain status quo that is mutual restitution of their territories. The status quo was developed. It was also agreed to help with each other during the attack by a third party. If the Mysore was attacked by a third party, the British would come to save Mysore. Likewise, if the British was attacked by a third party, Mysorean ruler Hyder Ali would come into 
for front to save the British. This kind of agreement was also ended in between Mysore ruler Hyder Ali and the British under the Treaty of Madras signed on 4 April 1769. Under this Treaty of Madras, the first Carnatic War came to an end. Second Anglo-Mysore War Second Anglo-Mysore was passed from 1780 to 1784. As you have been told earlier that under the Treaty of Madras, both the powers, Mysorean ruler Hyder Ali as well as the British was required to help each other during the invasion by a third party. But the British had no intention to stick this alliance. They deliberately violent, violated the terms of the Treaty of Madras when Marathas invaded Mysore. The British did not come forward to help Mysore ruler Hyder Ali. So it was an open violation of the Treaty of Madras ended in between Hyder Ali and the British. Over the English, Hyder Ali found the French was more helpful in meeting his military demands, especially the foreign weaponry and saltpeter compared to English. So he was more inclined towards the French rather than the British. Now we are looking at the circumstances behind the outbreak of the Second Anglo-Mysore War. The outbreak of the American War of Independence against the British and the French with American colonists made Warren Hastings, he was the Governor General during this time, extremely suspicious about French and Mysore relations. As you have been told earlier that Hyder Ali used to get arms and ammunition from French. So this alliance between French and the Mysorean ruler in the background of American War of Independence where the French offered support to American colonies against the British. So it created suspicion among, among the minds of Warren Hastings. On the part of the Hyder Ali, he arranged a common front with the Naisam of Hyderabad and the Marathas against the common enemy, the English East India Company. In July 1780, with this, the Carnatic the second Carnatic, sorry, the second Anglo Mysore War began. In 1780, Hyder Ali attacked Carnatic. As you know, Carnatic was one of the province of the Nizam of Hyderabad and captured Arcot. After defeating the English under Colonel Bailey. On the other side, the English attempt to capture a French settlement at Mahi. It provided the immediate background for the outbreak of the Second Anglo Mysore War. In 1780, Hyder Ali captured Arcot, the capital of the Carnatic. The English attacked a French settlement in Mahi. This Mahi was considered as within the territorial jurisdiction of Hyder Ali. That is why he decided to strike back. Again, the British was able to bring their side, the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas. In 1781, with the support of Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas, the English was able to defeat. Hyder Ali at Porto Nova. 
the english forces were led by general sir air cute at porto novo hyder ali was defeated by the english forces with the support of the marathas and the nizam of hyderabad in the following year however hyder ali was able to inflict a defeat on the british he defeated a force under the british colonel braithwaite but he was not able to continue his struggle against the english in 1782 during the course of the second carnatic war hyder ali died of cancer after his death hyder ali son became the next ruler of hyderab next ruler of mysore and he led the second carnatic war against the british he carried on the struggle against the british tipu was able to defeat english forces at bednur however the struggle between tipu and the british continued each side was not able to win over the other so on the part of the british side the anglo french conflict in europe came to an end so it was time to establish peace between the french and english in india as well and because of the continuous war the financial resources in madras got crunch on the part of the tipu sultan whether he was interested in continuing the struggle against the british no immediately come into power he wanted to turn his attention towards strengthening his administration he came into power during the course of the second carnatic uh, second anglo mysore war so he wanted to strengthen his administration so both the british and tipu sultan wanted to discontinue the war so lord macartney he was the governor of madras he took the initiative to enter into a peace between tipu sultan and the british it culminated with the signing of the treaty of mangalore between tipu sultan and the english under this treaty of mangalore the second anglo mysore war came to an end in march 1784 but it did not provide this treaty of mangalore did not provide a permanent solution in the struggle between tipu sultan and the british tipu sultan wanted to completely eliminate the british from india with the support of turks and the french for this purpose he sent emissaries to tuck and constantinople in 1784 and again in 1785 he sent a mission seeking military help from turkish rulers he also sent another mission to the french king in 1787 seeking military support against the english in india now coming to third anglo mysore war third anglo mysore war was from 1790 to 1792 in 1786 lord cornwallis became the governor general of india once he reached india 
as the Governor General, Lord Cornwallis saw Tipu as a chief rival to the British interest in South India. So he was it to be defeated. And again, the Indian forces, Nisamo Hyderabad and the Marathas of the Western India, brought it to the side of British. And they arranged a triple alliance in 1790. It was at the initiative of Lord Cornwallis to defeat Tipu Sultan once for all. Lord Cornwallis arranged an alliance with the Marathas in Western India and Nizam of Hyderabad. Now we are going to see the immediate background of the third Anglo Mysore War. Tipu's differences with the Raja of Travancore provided the immediate background to the Third Anglo Mysore War. Travancore was a protectorate of the British since 1784. The Raja of Travancore purchased Jai Kotai and Kranganur from the Dutch in Cochin state. These two places were located in Kochi and from Cochin, from the Dutch in Cochin state, these two places were purchased by the Raja of Travancore. Tipu considered Cochin state as his a tributary state. So Tipu Sultan considered the purchase of Jaikote and Kranganur by the Raja of Travancore from the Dutch in Cochin state as a violation of his sovereignty. It provided the immediate background for the Third Anglo Mysore War. Hence, Tipu decided to attack Travancore in 1790. With this, the Third Anglo Mysore War commenced. As you have been told earlier, Travancore was an protectorate ally of the British since 1784. Waiting for a war by the British, the British sided with the Raja of Travancore against the Tipu Sultan. It brought the British and the Tipu Sultan again on a war front. Thus, the Third Anglo Mysore War commenced. It was Governor General Lord Cornwallis him, himself assumed the charge of the armed forces. And he was he proceeded to Bangalore through Vellur and Ampur after assuming the direct charge of the armed British armed forces. Lord Cornwallis himself along with a powerful army marched to Bangalore. It formed the part of the Mysore ruler Tipu Sultan. In 1721, Lord Cornwallis was able to capture Bangalore. It was very near to the capital Mysore. Then he turned his attention to Sirangapattam, the capital of the Mysorean ruler Tipu. The English captured Coimbatore, but Tipu was able to recover Coimbatore from the English. But it was this crucial time, the two Indian powers, Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad, they came forward and offered military support to the English against Tipu. With the support of these forces sent by Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad, 
English was able to capture Sirangapattam. However, Tipu offered a tough resistance. He could not withstand against the British. In this third round of struggle between the British and the Mysorean ruler, the British emerged victorious. After the failure of Tipu Sultan, the English and Tipu Sultan ended another treaty. This treaty was Treaty of Sirangapattam. This treaty was ended in March 1792. This was the third treaty ended in between the Mysorean rulers and the British. The first treaty was Treaty of Madras and the second treaty was Treaty of Mangalore and this was the third treaty, Treaty of Sirangapattam. What were the terms of the Treaty of Sirangapattam? 1. Tipu surrendered half of his territories to the British. It was a heavy loss to Tipu Sultan. The British acquired following places from Tipu, Bairamakal, Dindikal and Malabar. Malabar was known for vast resources and trade in pepper and cardamom. Now the British got Malabar. The Marathas who were given the territory on the Tungafadra side. What territories Nisam of Hyderabad got? He received the territories from the Krishna beyond the Pennar. These territories went into Nisam of Hyderabad. In addition to the surrender of his half of his territories, Tipu was also required to pay a war indemnity to the tune of 3 crore rupees. Besides, Tipu was also required to send his two, two young sons as a security to the British. No doubt from this, Tipu lost heavily in the third round of struggle between the English and the Mysorean rulers. Now going to fourth Anglo Mysore war was the last round of struggle. Lord Wellesley became the next Governor General of India in 17. 92. He reached India from the background of the Napoleonic Wars in Europe. It changed the situation in India. Wellesley, once he reached India, decided either to time Tipu to submission or to completely eliminate him. What was the modus operandi? It was subsidiary alliance. Subsidiary alliance was a military protection given by the English in lie of the surrender of their autonomy. It came into known as subsidiary alliance. But Tipu was not ready to accept this subsidiary alliance. He was not ready to surrender his independent authority to the British and put the Mysore under the charge of the British. Tipu wanted to have avoided military conflict with the British by accepting subsidiary alliance. It was introduced by 
Lord Wellesley with the intention to establish British influence in the court of the Indian princes, thereby to establish British authority. It was the, it came into known as subsidiary alliance. The British would deploy their own armed forces for the protection of a Indian ruler from internal as well as external attack and in return the Indian ruler was required to make an annual payment to meet the maintenance of the military for the protection of the Indian ruler. This came into known as subsidiary alliance. It was invented and effectively introduced in different parts of India by Lord Wellesley. But Tipu was not ready to surrender his independent authority. He openly said it was better to die like a soldier rather than to leave a miserable dependent of the oh, miserable, miserable dependent on the infidels, the non-believers, in list of their pension rajas and nawabs. This was the reply made by Tipu Sultan when he was approached by the British for the acceptance of subsidiary alliance. Now, the ground was prepared for another round of struggle. What were the charges leveled by the British against Tipu? They are what it to have been some reasons for attacking Tipu. The British found following reasons for attacking Tipu. 1. Tipu was making intrigues with the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas. Secondly, he was sending missions to Arabia, Saman Shah of Afghanistan, ruler of Constant, Turks in Constantinople or the French in Mauritius or the France. These were the excuses found by the British to attack Tipu Sultan. The operations against Tipu commenced on 17 April 1799. In this round of struggle, Tipu was completely defeated. He died while heroically fighting against the British at Sirangapatam. On the death of Tipu Sultan, the third round of struggle between the British and the Mysoreans came to an end on 4th May 1799. After the defeat of Tipu, in the fourth round of struggle between the British and the Mysorean ruler, the members of the Tipu family, what did happen to them? They were brought to Bellur and they were allowed to leave at Bellur. After the fall of Sirangapattam, the British officials, the British engaged in the plundering of Sirangapattam. The British armed forces and the officials engaged in plundering the state of Mysore. After which the English age, the territories of Tipu between the British and the Nizam of Hyderabad. Nizam of Hyderabad offered all support to the British against the Mysorean ruler 
Tipu Sultan. The English annexed the following territories after the defeat of Tipu in the, in the fourth round of struggle. The English annexed Canara, Coimbatore, Vayanad, Dharmapuram and the entire sea coast of Mysore. All these places were brought under the control of the British. Then a boy of the Hindu Odayar family, Krishna Raj III, was made as the ruler of Mysore. As you may recall that the British told one of the main reasons behind their attack of Mysore was to restore restoration of the rightful persons, the guardi of this Mysore state. The Odayar who had been ruling the Mysore since 17th century, they were the original inheritance of Mysore. After a brief period, Mysore was again restored the Hindu rulers what I are family. Subsidiary alliance was introduced. Tipu Sultan stubbornly opposed the introduction of the subsidiary alliance, but Krishna Raj III was required to accept subsidiary alliance. Since then, Mysore became one of the protectorate state of the British. British army was stationed in Mysore. And in order to meet the financial requirements for the maintenance of the army, the Mysore ruler was required to make annual payment to the British. With this, Mysore became a dependent of English because for protection of Mysore from foreign as well as internal attacks, Mysore was made to depend upon the British for military help. In 1831, another British intervention was made in Mysore. It was during the period of Governor General William Bendick. He assumed the control of Mysore following the allegations of poor governance in Mysore. He directly assumed the power of Mysore. Another development took place in 1881. It was during the period of Lord Rippon as the Governor General and Viceroy, he returned the kingdom to the monarch of the Hindu Odayar family in 1881. These were the later interventions made by the British in Mysore. Now we are going to analyze the causes behind the English success and why Tipu failed and why the British emerged victorious. One of the main reasons, as you know, behind the failure of Mysorean ruler Tipu Sultan was the continuous rivalry among the Indian powers. Most of the time, Nisam of Hyderabad or the Marathas or the Karnatic engaged with each other in prolonged struggles. 
it has shattered the financial resources as well as the internal administration of these indian powers it was one of the main reason behind the failure of the mysorean ruler in addition to that it provided a golden opportunity to the british to play off one power against the other no doubt it was with the support of indian powers like the marathas or the nizam of hyderabad english was able to defeat the mysoreans otherwise they were not able to defeat the mysorean rulers had not they been mustered the support of these country powers like nizam of hyderabad or the marathas had these country powers joined together what would have been the outcome no doubt the british would have been failed even with their superior military power lack of resources was another reason compared to marathas and nizam of hyderabad the mysore was a rich state but after the third round of struggle between tipu sultan and the british tipu sultan was forced to surrender half of his territories following which he began to face financial crunch forcing him to reduce the cavalry and the infantry on the eve of the third anglo mysore war tipu sultan had 45000 foot soldiers but after the third anglo mysore was he was forced to reduce the size of the army to 30000 foot soldiers likewise the number of horses were also reduced by tipu sultan because of the lack of adequate financial resources what about the british as we have seen in one of the previous lectures the british had already occupied bengal one of the most rich state one of the richest states in india so the british was able to mobilize the resources available from bengal in order to finance the military operations against the indian rulers but the condition of the indian states were different these indian states always faced financial difficulties as you have been told earlier after the third round of struggle he lost his half of his territories it resulted in the reduction of revenue following which he was required to reduce the strength of his military it provided an opportunity to the british to defeat mysorean ruler tipu sultan even though he made alliances with the french since napoleon was preoccupied with wars in europe napoleon was not able to send the forces on time to help tipu sultan certain historians argue that tipu sultan was failed because of the fact that his army men and the administrators were hindus but in fact he did not adopt any discriminative policy and c a bailey 
in his book New Cambridge History of India elaborately portrays that his defeat was not the result of the religious conspiracy even though he was a muslim he did not religiously hurt at the hindus thank you dear students for watching my class thank you Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening, I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.